So uh, as Tony mentioned, this was kind of a, a topic that he came up with. And I, you know, I sat around and thought about it and thought about it. And the way I decided to do this was to look at my weblogs. Um, and this is very engineering driven of me. Um, and just say, here are the 50 top things that people look at on my site. Um, so unless I told you the answer to this question, um, who can guess what the most popular uh, article is on my site? Sorry? Close. Configurator? Close. Beer. Beer. No. Um, <laughs> it should be. Um, so the most popular uh, article that I've ever written, um, although it just got eclipsed, so, is the 25 best hacker movies of all time. Um, in this uh, article, I, yeah. Um, I talk about hacker movies. <laughs> um, it just got eclipsed uh, a couple days ago by another article that I wrote. Anyone want to guess? The 50 best hacking and computing <laughs> That would be brilliant. Um, a list of all the Fitbit badges. <laughs> Apparently, um, Mac admin topics are not quite as popular as some of the um, more esoteric things. So. Um, so I, I divided this up into two parts, uh, one on Mac and one on iOS. So some of the iOS things are actually more popular, but they're down in the iOS section of the deck. So as far as uh, stuff that's pertinent to this group, um, the most popular page is the server guides. So this came about, um, has anyone heard of Mac Mini Colo? So, uh, so the guy from Mac Mini Colo call, called me and he was like, you know, you have all these, all these uh, all these articles, and it sure would be great to put them like in some kind of logical fashion that actually makes sense, uh, pedagog pedagogically or gogically. Um, anyways, um, so so I said sure, and then the next version of OS 10 came out, and I just went ahead um, in order to get them out on zero day and built a guide myself, um, and that guide actually ended up becoming um, expanded, expanding uh, a lot more pages, a lot more fine tuning. A lot, um, I would say more editing, but I don't normally get edited anyways for things I post. Um, and it became the, uh, the take control book on OS X server. So, um, <clears throat> so if anyone's seen that book, it's pretty much those guides. So I don't bother buying it, just read the, no, I'm kidding, if Adam's watching. Um, so, uh, so who said profile manager? So that would be the more accurate, um, the more accurate one. So, um, one thing that you find, so has anyone noticed that these articles go up the day that the OS comes out? So I spend all summer um, basically uh, regression testing OS 10 for free for Apple. Um, because uh, as John and I were talking about last night, when you're doing technical documentation, you need a screenshot. And either you're gonna fake the screenshot, which I've never done, or you're gonna make that screenshot happen. So if if uh, your steps don't produce the same screenshot, then you have to go fix your steps, or you have to tell Apple, hey, this, uh, this is broken, it's not working, whatever. So, um, so tip number one, there's a whole uh, guide of all the features of OS X Server. Feel free to jump there um, and get stepped through caching services, SIU, et cetera, et cetera. Um, tip two, profile manager. Um, it's there, it works, it's great for proof of concepts. Um, and it was a lot of this work that I did around documenting profile manager, um, uh, command line interaction with profile manager, et cetera, that really caused me to go off and write an MDM solution that was actually stable. Not that profile manager is not stable if anyone from Apple's watching. <laughs> um, so another one, Apple's adaptive firewall. Um, so I. I wrote this article the day that the firewall dropped, um, the application layer firewall, um, at, or the adaptive firewall. And, um, you know, uh, like with a lot of things, you're, you're doing a lot of research and development. You're trying to figure out how some feature works, how, how this new technology works, um, and, and uh, kind of laid it out there. So, <clears throat> next up, another firewall article. And this is all in order of the amount of frequency that people come to my site, um, which in some ways may indicate the amount of frequency with which a tool is used. I'm not sure. 
Um, but using PF and OS X, uh, you know, when Apple went from IPFW over to PF, I, I had to do a bunch of research to figure out how to, how to use it. In the first edition of the security book that I did, uh, we, we had a whole chapter on IPFW. Um, in some ways, this got put into what's about to become the third edition of that book, which I'm working on right now. The profiles command, who was it that corrected what I said? Was that you? About the profiles command being always, not once often always, or profiles? So, um, so to, clear, to, to be clear, what I was talking about was MDM. With MDM, when you send it down, it's always not once, and it doesn't have the once often always. Um, this article had a very interesting uh, result, so to speak. Um, a bunch of people from a bunch of different companies, including Jamf, FileWave, et cetera, uh, called and they're like, how do we do this? So, um, so that, that was kind of an interesting, including uh, Monkey or Greg. But, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, the profiles command, how to use it, you know, how to, how to list profiles, list the contents, list what they do, um, ma make your own profiles. And um, when a bunch of the different open source projects around automatically <coughs> baking profiles and things like that were, were kind of first coming around, I got a lot of questions on that as well. So learn to use the profiles command. That would be another tip, I guess. Um, so commands galore. Uh, one day, I just sat down and started writing a list of all the OS X commands that I could think of that were pertinent in any way, shape, or form. Um, this one, here's a huge tip. Don't do this. <laughs> there was a follow-up article to this that I wrote on how to use iSCSI with XAN. The bigger tip is definitely don't do that. Um, dodgy is not a good enough word to describe how I feel about iSCSI with XAN. It is a terrible, terrible idea. Um, I, mounting iSCSI volumes in general is fine um, and working with them, but uh, you know, third-party tools, some of which are free, just load them up, bang, easy to do. So iSCSI. Um, who actually cares about iSCSI with OS X? So you're, you're using servers, though, still, and you're mounting your iSCSI shares in order to do podcast producer workflows or something like that? Oh. <laughs> right. Um, so launch D, uh, na navigating launch CTL, um, managing you know, launch services. Deploying Chrome. Uh, this has changed, so don't use my article. Use Rich Troutons. There's a tip. Um, you know, when I wrote it, it was, that was how we did it. Um, and it was like one of the first things that I saw on how to do it, but it's changed. Um, but uh, a lot of times if I encounter some bizarre piece of software, I'll just document like how to do it so that next time I need to do it, it's, uh, it's easy for me. And that's kind of how I end up writing most of these articles. It's like, oh, I have a task to do and I'm gonna get it done. And along the way, I may or may not document what I did. So, and if I do document what I did, then I'll typically throw an article on it. And uh, encrypted really started as my own wiki before wikis were a thing. Um, and I guess somehow Google indexed it and people started finding it in bizarre countries like Sweden and, uh, and asking me to go do things. So, um, XAN, how to. I do not think I'm gonna update this to 10.11. XAN is in 10.11. XAN I think will continue for a long, long time. It's beautiful software, but maintaining a lab in my home to do fiber channel has gotten a bit uh, redundant, so I don't care to do it anymore. Um, I mentioned uh, the, the Exerv raid going away and the rise of the uh, promise arrays. So promise, how to, how to do the command line scripting or promise. Has anyone set up lots of XANs? Um, when you're doing that, like, it, you know, having to hit this weird like bonjour IP and then having to set everything up, you know, and, and create your arrays, it, it just gets really redundant. So at some point I started scripting it <clears throat> to make my jobs quicker. Um, so migrating from XAN, I said it's not going away, but a lot of people do move to store next or some other solution. This is specifically for connecting XAN clients to store next if you're doing that migration. Has anyone gotten a call from our friends at, uh, let's say Quantum or any other company saying, XAN's going away. You need to replace all your gear. So they're not aggressive here like they are in the US, um, I guess, is the message there. In the US, I would say all of my XAN clients from 318 
got this call saying, XAN's going away. And then they'd call me and I'd be like, that's not true. And then they had this immediate distrust for the people who told them it was going away. Um, very bad sales tactic, in my opinion. Um, so using OpenSSL, uh, this is connecting the services via SSL via OpenSSL to test, test connections. I think I used mail as an example, but the same kind of functionality works for, for most services. <clears throat> I'm gunning through this. I'm <laughs> so uh, mail app and auto discover, um, the contents of this article ended up resulting in changes to the way mail app works. Um, that was kind of fun, but, uh, but you know, I, I think when this article came out, um, we were in that transition period where Apple was stopping, Apple stopped trying to be the server solution for everyone and started telling people, well, just use uh, some kind of active sync mail service. Don't, don't bother with our mail server. Um, does anyone run an OS 10 mail server, by the way? I, at home or at work? So here's a, here's a tip. Don't do that. <laughs> um, there, there are some things that OS 10 server is really good at, caching service, um, for example, and there are some things that it's just dodgy at, um, and that's, I like this word dodgy, if, you, if you've noticed. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> um, scripted doc management. So I wrote this article because, um, so you were talking about customers um, not binding. And, um, and so if you don't bind, then what if uh, you're a school and, um, for example, maybe a lab or one-to-one uh, -one even, and you need your students to access their lockers, digital lockers, something like that. Um, so for this, I, you know, basically I, I had keyed off of uh, some users, um, some, I, some ID, I can't remember exactly what, and I was mounting things in, or putting things in the dock for them to access their secure lockers. So this was uh, maybe seven, eight years ago, and it was my first attempt to actually do a large deployment without any binding. And it worked out quite well. <clears throat> so DFS and OS X. Um, who uses DFS with OS X? Who loves DFS with OS X? Do, do, do you have a sign or a? No. <laughs> I thought you had a I love DF, DFS sign, like, like at the cricket game, you know, but no, okay. Do they have signs at the cricket game? Like, oh, we love it when you take guys, or not cricket, but Australian football, or bowl, bowl. 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 <laughs> it's odd that they pick the guy up and throw him on his head, and then don't get thrown out of the game. It's crazy. <laughs> Um, so when DFS dropped in OS X, um, I kind of went through and documented all the settings, uh, how to do it, et cetera, et cetera. So if you use DFS in your environment, um, there you go. So server app settings. Um, this one, um, so here's a tip. If you have a, a service that you use and you're only looking at the server app console, um, server admin setting, or from the command line, server app, pseudo server admin settings space service name, and you'll see all those settings that are missing, unless Apple just took them away completely. So I documented as many of them as I could, service by service, here. Who uses Windows servers with your Macs? Who does this? <laughs> um, so if you use Windows servers as file shares for all your Macs, DS, stores can, DS store files can become annoying. Ergo, let's just get rid of them. Installing packages from scripts, um, payload-free packaging, et cetera, uh, or the opposite. Um, I did do an article on payload-free packaging, but then all that seemed to change after that article, and I haven't bothered to renew it. Um, so here's a tip. If you go to an article that was written in 2006, and you're like, wow, this is um, outdated, and you email me, um, then I'll update it. But if you tweet it, that to me says, hey, I'm being a jerk. Um, <laughs> because I want the whole world to know that your article's wrong. And not, not telling me that it's out of date, but telling me that it's wrong. I'm like, well, what day did I, what year did I write that article? 06, go away. <laughs> um, so, yeah. 
Um, here's another tip. If you have something that you need to do in a month and you can't find it and you Google for it on the Apple platform, feel free to email me and I'll probably write an article for you on it if I have all the gear around because I'm always looking for new ideas because sometimes I get bored with myself. <laughs> and by sometimes, I mean always. <clears throat> so Firefox, again, you know, um, some things go out of date, some things stay consistent. This one is still semi-consistent. Kibana, has anyone read this article that I did? To me, this is one of the cooler articles that I did. Um, has anyone got a Kibana infrastructure in place? Um, so syslog services, does anyone centralize syslog services? Um, so the, the Kibana is part of a stack um, of, of services that um, is quite possibly the sexiest interface I've ever seen for, for viewing logs, um, especially centralized syslogs. Um, you can write recipes that, um, that sort data in different ways, um, and it's instant. It's all, um, it, the, the tech stack behind it, uh, like you can have terabytes of logs, and it'll just crunch through them, and a, a search will take seconds. Um, and it's, it's quite like Spotlight in a lot of ways. Um, so, big tip, uh, centralizing syslog services. This article takes you through the whole thing. It's very simple. And you can, you can centralize logs for thousands of computers on a single mini and then just um, quickly isolate issues. And one really cool thing about this, um, you can point syslogs for lots of things, um, Cisco devices, et cetera. So then you can search for, oh, I'm, I'm having a problem communicating between this device and this device. Um, and so source IP, destination IP, and it'll look through the Cisco catalysts, the firewalls, the, you know, if you've got everything pointing to the same place, you can see all the log entries across all the products that, that you're using that might be impactful. And I've seen some incredibly complex troubleshooting issues um, that we got through in like 10 minutes when, when we were able to see everything in one place like that. So um, I'm a huge, huge fan of that kind of stuff. Um, little hacksies, they're, they're these just little bitty single line command line tools. Um, this one, I think, I, think I, I get this question via email at least once every other week. I actually have this URL in my stickies or in my notepad on my machine and I just cut, copy, paste it over when people ask this. Um, seems like uh, ACLs, ACEs are still a very complicated thing to a lot of people. And so they end up mucking them up, mucking them up, and you've got all these entries, all these entries, and eventually you just want to recursively dump the whole thing and move back to POSIX. Actually, you can't really do that. So eventually you want to dump the whole thing and start over and apply new ones. Um, so I just, this is, I, I would say of all the things that people ask me that I send emails back on, this is probably the number one. Here's another tip. If you send me an email asking me a question about how to do something, be polite. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me, let me extend that. Just be polite. <laughs> it's not hard, you know. Uh, I'm not saying any of you have been rude. In fact, this has been like a very gracious conference. I mean, people brought me Legos. That's pretty badass. Um, the rest of you can bring me Legos as well. No. Um, so Deploy Studio, laying out imaging, um, you know, uh, I know that a lot of this has been documented there as well by now, but, um, but a lot of times if I write something and there's already existing documentation, I'm trying to digest it and say, here's a single path so that you don't have to read 800 pages to get, to get from point A to point B. So SMB util, when this dropped, um, immediately jumping on that. Um, so. The tip here is not the article. The tip here is who's running AFP as a server? Um, so obviously Apple has been changing what the default protocols are to connect to servers, et cetera, et cetera. So getting into more of an SMB mindset, you know, it is evil and all that stuff I know, but you know, it's the future. So automating events like logouts. The reason I wrote this article, um, I, I was doing a kiosk project, so this big company wanted to take 50, 60 machines and they wanted to make them into kiosks and put them all over the place. And what they wanted to do was make it where every time someone did something on the kiosk, we would log out, um, reset the user space to, to, or reset the Safari history, 
and then log back in. So um, obviously, log in, log out events, there's lots of other uses for that, but. FDE setup. So um, I would say, to use Rich Troughton again, um, this is kind of not that necessary anymore. Um, this was more zero day. I had it documented as soon as it came out. Um, since then, Rich has definitely established himself as pretty much the preeminent uh, file vault guy. Um, and so I would check out his stuff instead of mine. There's a tip. Um, but we'll get him next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll, yeah. <clears throat> He'll, he's a much better everything than me, oh, too. We'll get him now. Get out. Okay. <laughs> Definitely a better human being. Um, so, signing packages, um, as I was talking about earlier, um, you know, everything's going to have to be signed eventually. Everything may have to be signed soon. Um, so, signing packages, how to do it, quick, dirty, easy. <clears throat> Managing disks and volumes and scripts, you know, pre-flight -imi pre imaging tasks, things of that nature. Nmap, who uses Nmap? It's just the greatest little tool. Um, you know, no article can really do Nmap justice. There are books on Nmap. So I kind of tried to lay out some of the more common, simple things that I've done, um, but there's lots and lots and lots and lots of other stuff. So the tip is buy the Nmap book book, don't write, don't read my article. You can write my articles, though. <laughs> Nessus, who uses Nessus? <clears throat> um, you know, there, I read a book one time called Extrusion Detection. Has anyone read this? Extrusion. Extrusion Detection. It was excellent. The thesis of the book, which is a bit out of date now, but the thesis is still true, is that your number one security concern are your, your client computers. Um, and so the concept of the book was, at the time, everyone built these um, very hard, crusty external networks, and everything was really soft and gooey on the inside of their networks. So it was about like containerization, and not containerization like Docker, but containerization within your network. Um, but the point being with the Nessus, um, you know, it's incredibly easy to set up some scripts that will scan all of your machines and look for, uh, for potential vulnerabilities. Uh, vulnerabilities. For example, your users enable Apache and it's an old unpatched version of Apache. They then go to a coffee shop and their machine becomes a zombie. Um, yes, binding is still a thing for some um, and probably for most for a long time to come. So DS config AD scripting. I, I wrote this or I wrote the first version of this um, when I was doing 20 deployments a summer at schools around the United States. Um, I don't think I have any of my DS config AD scripts up there because I don't think I used to distribute those, but eventually I'll have to post them. Um, automating box connections. Um, you know, this was before they had a, an app for that, but, um, but one of the goals here was uh, to lay out how to sync your AFP servers up to box. Um, network setup. Uh, who does some of this type of stuff in their binding or their scripts? Um, you know, when I wrote this, there were about half as many, or the first version of this, there were about half as many verbs as there are today. So it's, uh, it keeps getting bigger every version, but. Recovery mode. Ah, uh, recovery mode. Um, so this one, uh, handling that, that, this is mostly built in all the imaging products now. Um, so it's not quite as big an issue as it used to be. Self-destructing scripts. Does anyone have any of these that they use? Um, I quite like self-destructing scripts. You can, you can put your, uh, your viral payloads in them and um, <laughs> all your machines are Bitcoin mines, by the way. No offense. Um, so uh, crash plan. Who loves crash plan? I love crash plan. I'm just gonna, um, uh, you know, when I when I wrote this, Apple had just started kind of promoting crash plan to their vendors and telling people to to use it. Um, this became a signifying. The reason I put this in here, um, a because it was on the list, um, but b also um, it became a signifying moment. It was that moment when. Um, we were doing, we were starting to get away from using Open Directory um, for mobile homes. 
and it became that moment where we were actually able to. So instead of using mobile homes as a backup, so as a very poorly architected backup solution in some of the schools, suddenly we were promoting using crash plan and getting away from mobile homes or portable homes with the exceptional labs. So. Crash plan APIs. Um, a, a really good tip on this, um, you know, use, basically in your imaging framework, you can script restores. So, oh, you're in a depot, your machine has a problem, your machine's broken, we're gonna spend 15 minutes trying to fix it. If we can't, we're just gonna go ahead and re-image it, and as part of the imaging process, we're gonna go ahead, check the backup, make sure it ran, image, and then once it's imaged, restore the backup back to the machine. That's why I wrote that article. <clears throat> um, and some products die. Um, this was a very popular article. Um, it was actually in the top 10 when Final Cut Server was a big thing. I spent countless hours learning how to use Final Cut Server, documenting um, how the database works, documenting how to connect to the database in the first place. And then the product died a very terrible death. Um, so to go to what you were saying, sometimes the, the career path is towards the third parties as opposed to towards the Apple products. Regression testing, all the things. Who regression tests? Not you, John. You don't count. <laughs> um, you know, uh, has anyone ever had like 200 uh, variations of images? And you want to make sure that your, uh, your trebuchet font loads on all of them when you open Word for the first time. Um, you know, that's one test. And then let's say another test is does Word open in the first place? Another test, another test. You define all these tests. Does anyone have a testing matrix for when they're imaging? Um, so here's a tip. <laughs> um, when, you know, if you, if you take a spreadsheet and you just say here's a test, Here's the steps that I used to do this, and then here's um, whether or not I've scripted it or whether or not it passes. And then for each new version of the operating system, you run through this regression matrix. Um, it's very easy to do it manually when you have one or two uh, machines and then as, or variations of an image. And then as you get more and more, then you have more and more variations that need to be tested, and you suddenly start to automate it. Um, here I used Sekuli. Um, test Plant is a, another very good product for regression testing. Um, and if you actually write software, regression testing that so that um, as part of your build process, um, you can check and make sure that everything's running properly. <sighs> so as systems administrators, we often need to let off a little steam after working our 80-hour weeks. Um, and then we end up getting addicted to a specific game and then that specific game takes over our lives and we end up missing uh, deadlines for chapters the, for our next books. In order not to do that, I recommend writing bots and winning back your life. Um, that way you can still get that 80th level monk in Warcraft without having to touch it. Has anyone cursed the bots on these games? Sorry. <laughs> um, so I read a lot. Uh, I, um, I've started a, uh, an Instagram account for uh, all my books. So I bought a new house recently, I downsized, um, and I realized that the 2,000 computer books just weren't gonna fit in the new house quite the way that they fit in the old house. So looking at some of those books like Windows 3.1, I, I had this um, very bizarre attachment to them. I just couldn't let go, even though it was Windows 3.1. So <clears throat> a friend of mine recommended, hey, you should start an Instagram account, take a picture, and then you can just donate them and get rid of them. So I started doing that. Um, so this isn't uh, very much of a tip, but if you want to see a bunch of really old books, you know, you can go there. Um, here is a tip, though. If you have, like, a bizarre attachment to things that take up a lot of space and maybe have people thinking of you as a hoarder in some way, shape, or form, um, before the television crews show up at your house to, to film you, um, consider opening an Instagram account and getting rid of some of it. <clears throat> uh, so the watch thing. Um, I was quite surprised how many, 
how many hits I'm getting. Um, this is rising very quickly. It will probably be within the top five articles or uh, pages on my site. Because some of these are pages and they have articles within them um, to lay out how to do things. But um, this is not a tip per se. It's not included in my 50. But um, if you get a watch and you want to know how to do some cool things, for example, until I started writing these, I didn't know that I could uh, listen to music on my watch without having my iPhone around. So I was still taking my iPhone on runs, and now I can leave it at home with my Bluetooth headset. So Bluetooth headsets, awesome. So those are the Mac articles and uh, watch. Um, so now moving into iOS. So any guess of what the most popular article on iOS I've written? Is ah, I can't give a shirt to all of you. <laughs> yes, Apple Configurator 101. Um, this ended up becoming a series of articles. I must have written 10 of them. Um, and then that became a book. Um, um, and I think that's going into second edition at the end of the summer as well. Um, because Configurator has a whole new look and feel. Um, who uses Configurator in part, parts of your workflows? Um, here's a big tip. Download Configurator 2 now and check it out, because it's not the same Configurator that your parents are used to. <laughs> um, it's cooler in some ways. Um, so who thinks that they have plenty of awesome tools for troubleshooting iOS deployments? Please use this one. So your device, when it's docked, can actually, you can actually sniff the network traffic as it's going over the wire. Um, do you guys use this in development stuff? Yeah. You sniff? Yeah. I, <laughs> I noticed that last night. Um, so so um, this is one of the tools that we use a lot in troubleshooting. Um, there are a few tools that when I moved into doing the bushel stuff, I picked up from the JSS team, which was kind of awesome. Um, so I think this was not one of them, but this was Libby Mobile Device. Um, so you can do lots and lots of cool things with, uh, with getting faster, testing faster, looking at logs, just trying to see exactly where problems really are. Um, and if you're furiously writing any of this down, you don't have to, because I'll put this present. Are you going to put it up, or do you want me? Yeah. Oh, by the way, here's a huge tip for all the speakers um, who are here. Uh, if you put images in your presentation, if you notice, there are no images in either of my presentations. Um, and the reason is because I stripped them all out last week. And why did I strip them all out last week? Because I got a letter. Who did I get a letter from? Getty Images. A presentation that I wrote in uh, 09 apparently had an image that I don't think Getty owned at the time, but they own now, that um, they now want $1,000 US for the nine downloads of that presentation that have occurred since the presentation was published on the internet. Bastards. <laughs> um, but whatever. So using Libi Mobile Device. Um, so Libi Mobile Device is a suite of things. You can do lots and lots of cool stuff with it. Um, you, can, you can pair, you can unpair from the command line. Um, it definitely factors into some of my regression testing frameworks for sure. Um, debugging APNS connections, um, there's lots and lots of stuff you can do here. So um, if you're, for example, trying to get, you know, campus issues worked out, there's lots of tips in there for that. Automated MDM enrollment, um, you know, this is the generic, let's throw a, a enrollment profile in a configurator type of stuff. So good and bad ideas, scripting Apple Configurator. So there are lots of things that you just shouldn't do in this world, but that as a consultant, I used to be forced to do um, because people would pay me, and I like money. Um, so one of those things uh, that, that resulted in so, some articles was scripting the database for Configurator, trying to figure out how to sync Configurator to multiple sites, um, working with the certs, and things of that nature. So I, I took a lot of my notes around that, popped them in this article, and voila. Um, then I got more calls from customers wanting me to do this more. Um, and some bizarrely massive organizations with hundreds of thousands of devices. 
and most of this just fell flat on its face. Um, so configurator versus MDM, you know, there are times and places to do things. And sometimes I just find stuff. Um, so this is, uh, you know, an article that points to someone else's script. So, <laughs> um, and that's quite possibly my favorite because normally if I'm posting a link, I looked for something uh, and I was gonna have to figure out how to do it on my own if I didn't find it and I found it and I just wanna give a hat tip to that person or I wanna remember how and so I put it in my place. That way I can find it again. So, um, mentioning the Apple IDs, creating Apple IDs, um, you know, Using this script to create a lot of Apple IDs, I'm actually working on another script that will associate them in, as part of an imaging solution in the login window. So I don't know if I'll ever finish it. I have, um, as I mentioned earlier, I have about 3,000 articles that I've done, and I've got about 3,000 that I'm working on. So, you know, maybe not 3,000, maybe 1,000, but a lot. Um, Sometimes removing a credit card from an Apple ID sucks. Um, you know, I was at a school. I needed to figure out how to do something. You know, it took me a while. I wrote it up. <clears throat> I don't really know what to say about this. So I was, I was sitting in bed one day, and um, my kid was sitting on top of me because she was four at the time, I think, and she was watching uh, the Transformers movie which, you know, it's not a big deal. It's not that violent, right? Um, but she was quite young, and it got me thinking, wow, she could have opened any movie. Um, there are some pretty racy movies on Netflix. Um, so, so I wrote this up, and when I wrote it up and put it up on Facebook, um, you know, because they, sometimes they link and whatever, um, my neighbor called, and she's like, oh my God, thank you! So, you know, sometimes you, you help your friends and they buy you beer. Um, and of course, announcing little projects. So I also use um, and get a lot of traffic on different pages that announce my books, and I throw them up on the sidebar and stuff like that. So there were 50 tips uh, in the form of articles. Um, I did do one of these. Here's a huge tip. I did one of these on network stuff last year at uh, Maxis Admin. And that deck is actually on the Maxis Admin site, and you can download it. And it's just 50 examples of network commands, how to use them, stuff like that, um, including nmap. There's like 10, 10 versions of, of different nmap commands. Um, I decided to go a little different route this time, um, simply because that time I just gunned through a bunch of commands, um, and I didn't take any time explaining them. So in this instance, it makes more sense in my head at least, because it's like, oh, I can do this thing, there it is. And uh, for me, reading RSS feeds, a lot of times I won't click on the article, but I'll see something in a title and I'll be like, oh, I can do that. And so it just triggers something um, that I in, end up incorporating in, into one of my workflows. So, so that's my slides. Um, and we have 15 minutes, so we can do questions for 15 minutes? Got him just where you want him, him up. Yes, sir. 15 Mac commands in 15 <laughs> minutes. Um, it's Mac specific? Oh, DS enable. No. <laughs> so you know what I can do? Um, who's any, anyone Greek? Um, <laughs> Not now. <laughs> <laughs> Where does that go? Money? <laughs> 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 um, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, eta, kappa, lambda, minus, zyma, crown, pyro, sigma, tau, upsilon, pi, chi, psi, omega. Boom. <laughs> Thank you. That's my, I have to do one stupid human trick per presentation, apparently. It was in the contract. You know. Huh? Oh. oh. Um, well, considering where I woke up, quite nice. I got a question. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned uh, the caching services of something Apple seemed to be doing quite well, and, and I agree, it's quite a, quite a neat zero config service. Yeah. Well, that's not true. You've actually got to turn it on. Yeah, you have to hit the button. Actually, you can script that as part of an imaging framework. Any thoughts, or maybe you, you've started tinkering with this already, on how it's going to work with uh, app thinning and uh, on-demand resources in iOS 9? Is it likely to support them still? 
So occasionally, people ask me questions that are covered under NDA yeah. for me. So I cannot answer that one. But yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, enough said. Enough not said. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I love the fact that the NDAs are coming down. I'm not going to publish my, like, I still don't publish my articles before the OS drops. Um, I see a lot of people with screenshots of the OS out there. Um, and I remember when this first started happening, and I was like, ooh, you're going to get in trouble. And then they didn't. And I was like, wow, I used to get in trouble for that. But, um, but that's pretty cool, you know. That'll, I'll drop that stuff zero day, I'm sure. Which is a very jampy thing of me. <laughs> I did it before I was jampy, apparently. <laughs> yes, sir. So um, now you work with Jam, and uh, you came on board to do a um, project. What's your thoughts, I guess, that you've been there a year now? What's your thoughts looking back? Is that project Oh, Bushel? Yeah, easier. It's been harder and I, I'm. I, I, I'll I've got a better idea. Before you answer that, I don't know how many people here know anything about Bushel. But maybe oh. you could do a five minute talk about what Bushel is. For, for when you asked me to come, you said, don't be too jampy. Yeah, but you know, you you know got, so. Got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got 12 minutes. Well. Um, so, Bushel is a mobile device management solution uh, for small, medium sized businesses. So. In the context of the people in this room, you might refer it to that, uh, that uh, cousin of yours who's always calling you, asking you questions. Um, it, we don't cover all the, frame, all the uh, keys. That's one of the things that is really hard, because to, to add a checkbox and activate a key takes you know, a couple hours sometimes um, in the code. And we have to like, refrain from making the UI more complex by supporting more features. So it's, it's built for small businesses. It's built for um, non-technical people to manage it or technical people to set it up and then hand it off to non-technical people. But um, you can usually get it set up in three to five minutes and, uh, and have an MDM with f three devices for free and then two bucks a device, American dollars, uh, after that. So um, it's very pretty. Thank you. Everything I do is very pretty. Can't you see? No. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, it, <clears throat> sorry? Sure. Unless it's owned by Katie. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst email I think I've gotten in a long time. I was not happy about that. Um, no. They made them for one No. I, I, like, I, I should have. <laughs> I don't know that my wireless is really working very well. There it is. Bushel's normally incredibly fast. I'm not sure why. <laughs> so we were we were after trying to make a solution that looked like or acted like Mailchimp. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh. That's a great interface. <laughs> so as far as MDMs go, um, I, I do think it is very pretty. Um, so we show a quick overview of, because um, I can't see it, <laughs> of all your devices. I only have one in this test account. Um, if the device hasn't checked in in a while, you'll see. Um, red exclamation points, things like that. We do file vault key escrow, um, activation lock bypass. Um, so if you click on, click on a device, it's pretty straightforward to, this is, um, you know, lock, unlock, wipe, show bypass code. Uh, so file vault key escrow, activation lock bypass, et cetera. So it's fun. Um, I find a lot of admins, um, like when, when we announced it at JNUC, there were a lot of admins in the audience. And they all started uh, emailing us saying, hey, will you add this? Will you add this? Will you add this? Because admins are never happy with what they've got. They always want more. No offense to you guys, because you're amazing people. And you bring me Legos, some of you. Um, but you know, one of the challenges is we didn't really write this for Add for the traditional administrator. Um, so 
Um, so feel free to send me feature requests, but I might just, you know, delete the email. Um, that's what product management is, by the way. <laughs> delete, delete, delete. No, I'm kidding. Um, kind of. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so to answer the, the question from earlier, though, um, you know, going from zero customers to now almost 5,000 um, is... Uh, was an amazing experience. That's probably one of the best parts. Um, having people constantly tell me that the interface is pretty, um, and therefore we built something, you know, that people love, um, and then getting as many customers as we have and having some success there, I think, are, to me, the best parts. The hardest parts, um, I had to learn Angular, uh, <laughs> which was not fun. Um, uh, you know, working. Um, in a, in a larger company and trying to figure out, oh, who does this, who does this? Uh, Jamf is SOC 2 compliant, so going through SOC 2 compliance um, was, was not fun. Um, so, you know, those would be the challenges, but the, the end result, I think, is worth it. Has there been any use cases or customers that will have surprised you? Oh, my God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so the, the traditional market that we expected, um, you know, in marketing you make these customer personas, right? And you lay out these stories, and sometimes they're extremely elaborate, um, of how people are going to use your product and how they're going to find it and things of that nature. So we were expecting internet startups. We were expecting small businesses. Um, what we weren't expecting was construction companies. We weren't expecting churches. Um, I think one of the number one takeaways I've had is, I had no idea how many churches used boatloads of Apple devices. Um, pretty much every church in the United States, and we have a lot, um, you know, are, are pretty, pretty filled up with Apple devices. So, um, so those are some of those use cases. Um, you know, when we released it, we didn't support activation lock bypass. Um, that was the number one feature request from our core target market, so we built it. Um, we also didn't have file vault key escrow. That's something that a lot of more traditional admins ask for. And we decided to go ahead and build that because it was very easy for us to put it in the interface without making it uglier, you know? So, um, so yeah, some of those use cases, people just want to use it for file vault key escrow. Some people just want to use it for wiping devices if they get lost. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, having to learn the insights. So, you know, when I was a consultant, I knew, a, I, I felt like I knew a lot about how MDM worked. And once you get in and you're like actually running the commands against Apple's APNS servers, you're like, oh, now I understand why that was that weird way and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's bushel. So, um, yeah. That, you know, I, I know the guy who writes the interface for Profile Manager, so I'm not going to say too much. <laughs> um, I, I can say, um, you know, when we call uh, Apple for support for some of this MDM stuff, um, when we're writing the code, they often point us to Profile Manager. And I think that's one of the main reasons that they'll always make Profile Manager, is because they need to give us an example of what it needs to look like. And, and we need to be able to sniff that traffic and see what's going on and things of that nature. So, you know. Um, but do I ever look at Profile Manager and think, oh, I'd do this better? Absolutely. <laughs> and then I send him emails about it. <laughs> and he's like, oh, this needs to go to product management. I'm like, well, I know that the product managers don't do anything because I am one. <laughs> Gee, they're a shy crowd today. That's cool. Um, it's better than Sweden. I mean, the Swedish are super, super nice people, but they never ask questions. So, so who wants a shirt? Oh, uh, okay. So this one went up first. So I'll start there, there, and there. I got you already, but what would you say um, <laughs> if, you, if you had your uh, um, wish list of interesting projects in the Apple world or otherwise that you could pursue? Um, what, just what would you choose? What's going to be the biggest Apple deployment ever? I guess I'd like to orchestrate that. Uh, 120,000 devices. 
um, some of these school districts, because um, so one of the you know in the U.S. schools are district based, so you you have like sometimes 80, 90 schools according to how big the district is. So you have some cities like um, Los Angeles Unified, which obviously wasn't a, a very successful deployment, but it, it, good in its own right. Um, Miami-Dade County, you know, some of the bigger cities that everybody knows about, some of those are some of the largest deployments. And I've found that lots of these big enterprise deployments, now that we're starting to do, you know, 10,000, 50,000 devices in them, we're taking the lessons we learned from schools and applying them. So the education industry, in a way, especially with Apple Tech, is really feeding what we see going into the enterprise. So. Um, less labs, all one to one in the enterprise, obviously, but you know, pretty pretty similar. <clears throat> Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Obviously, the DNS server would have to allow us to write up into it. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to write something up on that. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, so the guy right behind you? Huh? Have you ever used it before for any performance? Yeah, I still have one of my connect one of my computers actually connected to some other dude's house and see his stuff sometimes <laughs> when I was testing it, you know. Um, and and obviously in schools, um, I think there is a firewall that supports doing it centrally. Um, I don't remember which vendor. Yeah, Arrowhive. Um, uh, right. But I think, I think someone does support that as well, though. Yeah. Um, so there, there's lots of different stuff, but I, I've never seen it work perfectly. Um, I, I've definitely never seen uh, Bonjour over wide area networks work very well. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> um, there was one more question before we're out of time. Right behind you, the guy. Oh, well. Did you? No? You were just scratching your nose? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Can I get it up that far? <laughs> nice catch. <laughs> All right, well, so before I go, um, you know, I, I know that uh, everyone's really hard on themselves. Every presentation I saw was really great, and I'm, I'm glad to have been part of something like that. And. Uh, Big thanks to Tony et al. at, at the AUC for, for all their stuff. So thank you.